Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. Everyone claps. Claps. But I... Rudge, Rudge, Rudge. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed. That smell... You hold your breath. Wait and see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept! Your stomach begins to growl, as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating! For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Sure. Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of true gentlemen can fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants them all to herself. Oh, oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man. If you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates. My fellow classmates. Dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. Save the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary art. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. 
alone with the flavors. You feel something that can only be described as love for a man, for a flavor. Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha 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 ha! How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade, like my bra size. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You feel his warm breath as he whispers, Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... It's something my great-grandmother taught me. <gasps> wow, you never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. <laughs> While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. <laughs> Neck up to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest but thoughtful. I like this idea because Dr. Spruce was in here earlier and he mentioned that instead of 11 herbs and spices, it might be a 12th herb and spice. Hell yeah! Potatoes, corn, mac and cheese in the family bucket. Ah, oh, Two ton ever, that, that is the way straight to my heart and you know it. What do you what do you what do you think, two ton ever? Should we should we neg Colonel Sanders? Should we wow him with a big idea and try to make it twelve herbs and spices? Or should we be modest but thoughtful? What do you think? What do you think, man? I knew you've been here. I know you've been watching me hammer this shit up. Come on, man. I know. I fucking know. What do you What do you think? I also think that that is the right idea, because negging is obviously bad. Wowing him with a big idea. I mean, it's eleven herbs and spices, and he's already he's already made a point of saying eleven. Be modest but thoughtful. Let's try it. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now, you've got his attention. Right on, Two-Ton Hammer. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Margarina. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. 
I can't do go voices. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show her stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans. You're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking up with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel! Hey, hey, Colonel! Hey, Colonel! Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Margarina. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! Oh my! Two potential partners! I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose! It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Says you! This is a lonely Valentine's Day stream game! Get with the program! Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Pop or Clank? I kind of think sticking with her with Pop might be a bad idea. He's kind of... he's not really all there. On the other hand, we don't know that much about Clank. But Clank... Might also be... Might, Clank might turn out to be comedic. Uh... Then again, maybe looks could be deceiving. Maybe Pop, a, Pop or Bob is actually a good guy. Uh... Two times, you want to weigh in here? I'm thinking Pop. I mean, like... I want to go Clank. But I, th I think there's more to Pop than meets the eye. But then again, like, that could be a red herring. I don't know. I'll give it another five Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Or one Mississippi. Okay. Oh. Alright. No, nah, it's, it's okay, two ton. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. Oh, yeah, I, I know. You, you're probably lurking, uh, Two-Ton Hammer. I, I keep wanting to call you by your real name. But it's all right. It's all right. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Wah, 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 wah. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzzz. Tissue, I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders and the panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Is he exposing his circuitry to her? Looks like you two will be fine. Oh, Tuton, you might you might have uh you might have had this right there with that. Alright. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're gonna keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Hmm. Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Or using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Or your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, I will pick myself, just to let the lurkers lurk. And, as much as I would like to use Octopus to blow Colonel Sanders' mind, I, I, we're gonna end up going like the, the, we're gonna end up going like, 
the main fucking milk toast route, but even the main milk toast route is pretty fucking crazy. So let's go with your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes! Now, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call for me? Oh, no. Jeez, Van Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Margarina's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Margarino was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! Doubt it! Don't be rude, Van Van! Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. If that it just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Miriam. Your forever bestie who always has your back. You turn to Miriam. And as soon as you find her. She senses it and looks back. This girl's friends in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think that Ashley and Van Ve Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust vis-a-vis -vis my skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend. But Margarina is my partner for today's activity. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Ah. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. 
together. You take the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heap and sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage, without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Fuck you, Ashley. And yes, Uncle Phil would have a heart attack seeing those potatoes. Fuck you, Ashley. Van Van, do something, do something. Scoopy up a finger full. Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Margarita. We do not waste food in the burnt cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed, pot mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Plated upon a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and, and may have turned in the process. The results can be toxic! Too late! It has been eaten! I, I, uh, think I left something in the oven. Uh, I don't feel so good. It killed him! He's dead! Wait, is he legit dead? What? Is he really fucking dead? He just turned to a ghost right on the spot? <laughs> Everyone step back, don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slapped up in Pop's mouth. Pop witches in pain for just a moment, and then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock is frozen to the whole crowd. These motionless statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. <laughs> um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you are shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands at the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I, I want you to know, th they're not a great representation of my skills. I, I, I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. C Colonel Sanders? Yes, Margarina? Th there's, something I, th there's something I need to tell you. Hold it right, hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Ah, oh, jeez. You see, 
When I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes, floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I... You... Sh shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are, are we forgetting that you're cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Ah. Forget him, we're talking about me. Me, 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 me! I'm the hero. The Sporkbuster is here to fight our hero! What, what? What the fuck? What, what the hell is this? <laughs> this is out of left field. I, I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me, just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster, see? Is, is, is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further... It's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? Really? Attack and defend. Let's defend. Let's see what happens. Which do you, you decide to defend? Which defense will you choose? Trepidation? You close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Sport monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Fat lot of good that defense did. You decide to go on the attack. Uh, I'm gonna cook it with love. Cook with love does one damage. Sport monster won't forget this. Spoke sport monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I, ah, shoot. I should go back. Oh, well, cook it with love. Cook with love. That's one damage. Sport monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Sport monster use, uses utilitensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Buff up! No one can, can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and, quite frankly, a little gassy. You better attack soon or you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. Chow down. Chow down does two damage. A powerful blow. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Sport Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge! Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here! Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens! Hot Pie Power Pinch! Hot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Sport Monster is defeated! You, you, save me! An injured sport monster spews steam into the night. <sighs> Spare this wretched beast. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast. I know you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this. And I certainly won't be back, like you said. 
The spoilt monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover! What is this game? <laughs> you open the cover and find a library card tucked inside! The last name to have signed it out is Borko. What? Who the fuck is Borko? Ha! Huh. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you be begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Oh, it must have an autosave. Okay, cool. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. How did he know where I live? How did he know where I live? 